uh, wallet share versus market share, right? So most people, if you look at a lot of the business kind of stuff, it's always like, how can we gain market share? And there was a book on Warren Buffett and other billionaires and the concept that they think about is wallet share, which is And so I want you to kind of talk a little bit about the Warren Buffett stuff you're talking to me about, yeah. about how you don't know what like a billion, how, how a billionaire really works. And then I want to get into uh, what makes sense. Yeah. So on, and I'm going to grab, I'm going to grab yeah, my phone too. So I can go through questions. So first of all, it, like what he was covering basically was the concept of uh, mind, uh, wallet share versus market share. Right. So most people, if you look at a lot of the business kind of stuff, it's always like, how can we gain market share? And there was a book on Warren Buffett and other billionaires. And the concept that they think about is wallet share, which is how do we get all the money in the wallet? How do we get a percentage of that? So if you look at Warren Buffett, I was talking to my wife and we were like, the amount of money that we've paid Warren Buffett that you don't even realize, Coca-Cola, um, Amex, anytime you ever do a credit card with Amex, that's him. All that kind of stuff. Uh, if you look at the, uh, basically that is them taking more and more of our of the wallet share, and that's what Dan was talking about. We were kind of brainstorming over the weekend. How many more ways can you get money out of a customer, right? So, I'll answer the second question. <laughs> can a champion hoodie is a secret? So the, the second question he wanted me to kind of follow, yep, hashtag wallet share. So yeah, obviously the more of the wallet that you could pick up with them. And you know, if you look at information marketing businesses, the upsells, the downsells, all of those you can, are ways that you can, what I mean by that is, you know, when someone signs up for a Weebly site, you know, you make money that way. Uh, with all of your customers in the local space, the you know they're going to be buying other things, right? So the more that you can take money when they buy other things, they're probably going to buy Facebook ads. They're probably going to buy other services. And the more of that marketing budget you can take out, that's more wallet share. So hope, hopefully I'm explaining that uh, properly. If you guys have any questions, let me know. The, um, the other concept that Dan wanted me to cover on this was how do you look at and how do you gauge opportunities? And so myself, I was a copywriter in the business opportunity space. So I've got very familiar with people who buy these opportunities. And I was always looking, even myself, for what's a good way to be able to judge how well an opportunity is. Like, should I even start this business? Because the question Dan asked me was, how do you judge? Like, what's the biggest question that you get? beginner entrepreneurs like right what do people ask me how, it was how do you i was actually how do you you're on the right path yeah. how do you instruct someone about a business model before they've ever done a business model to just help them decide if it's something that should put any sort of attention you know in their current business or if they were not in business yet which everyone here is yeah but in their, if, if they have a current business like lead gen or web design seo and another thing comes floating by them how do you differentiate and know what's, what's the protocol. Yeah. yeah. What's, yeah, the, that's, what's the framework? Yeah. And I, I remember it more now. So like basically the question was, what is the framework framework for making decisions? Right. Right. And the framework that I have personally is the business has to make sense. Right. And C E N T S. And those all stand for something. So the C stands for control, right? You guys should all have a business that you are 100% controlling. So that immediately rules out businesses like MLM, uh, you know, affiliate marketing, anything where uh, you can get the business ripped out. And being in this industry now for 10, 11 years, you see it. You see people do really well with the MLM. All of a sudden that MLM gets in trouble. Whoop, there goes their income. You know, all the people that were involved in Mob, you realize you have no control over that and you've relinquished control of that business. So the second is E, which is entry. This is one that's tripped me up a lot. And it's basically 
everyone's looking for the easy opportunity, right? They Low want entry. Yep. They, they want, and that's what sells it, right? You could start this business. It's easy, but what you'll find out is if it's easy for you to do it and the barrier to entry is really low, it's easy for everyone else to do it. Right. Which immediately kind of makes that a bad business, right? If you could, and that's, we, we sit, we've seen that a little bit with, I don't know how, how in detail you want me to go. Is it, let's just, but, let's, um, rip, let's roll. Look at people that uh, do Facebook ads, right? That's a, unlike SEO, unlike lead gen, which has a bit, takes a bit more time to do. And there's a barrier to entry to that business, which is the time, which is the linking, which is the knowledge, which is the know-how, right. which is what it's taught in the, with Facebook ad, like if you see someone doing well in lead gen, it's, it's, hard gonna, to replicate. it's harder to replicate. It's that's, there's a barrier to that. As opposed to when someone's slinging a Facebook ad, you could immediately look, go on Facebook, see their ad and duplicate that almost overnight. No, 